Today is Friday and that means FNA Friday for new animators and today we're going to talk about another part in the blocking animation series and today it's all about testing your rig. Before you animate, you gotta know if your rig is working. You gotta know what the strength is of the rig, what are the weaknesses, what is working, what is not, and kind of test it so that it works for the shot that you want to do. Because what you don't want is a surprise that when you're halfway through the shot, you realize, hmm, this is not really working and I can't continue with this shot. The easiest way to test that is to look at what other people have done with that rig. So you have very, very famous rigs that a lot of students have used. So you're gonna see a really wide range of shots and types of shots and styles and where they really push the rig to the limits. So if you have that at your disposal, that's great. It's the best way to go, I can do this, this, and this, unless you're gonna do something that no one has ever done with that rig. But you might have a rig that no one else has used. It's something brand new, something that you have done potentially, and then you might know more about the details of the rig, or some rig that you bought online that hasn't been really used that much. If that's the case, then I think there are a couple things that you need to do to test that out. Even if you have a rig that other people have used, there's still a good checklist just in case, because you still have to make it work for your shot and the content and the ideas of your shot. So right off the bat, if you have your rig, take your rig and move it off the origin. Because sometimes you have rigs that work well, but if they go off the origin and you start rotating them or you start transing them over and rotating, and not just the main root controller, but the overall body control or the overall rig controller that rotates the whole rig. And on top of that, you move the root, things can explode. I did a shot a long time ago with a dog and realized that if I move that in Y in 180 to kind of place it, just things were not quite working. Then again, it might have been me, I might have not seen something in the rig, so it doesn't always have to be a rig problem, it's probably also a user problem. Another thing that can bite you in the butt is the scale. Can you scale the rig, make it smaller or bigger? Now, if you can't, you could leave the rig and just scale the environment if you have one to make it smaller and bigger to kind of fit the needs, but scale can definitely be an issue. Then generally, you wanna check if the controls are there. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously, obviously the controls are there and there could be something missing, but do you wanna check for basic things? Like, does it have an eye care FK spine or can you switch? Do you prefer to have lots of joints and controls to rotate or do you prefer a box that just kind of moves the chest around and and those rotations at the same time. Does it have an accurate IK FK arm switch? Is it gonna be a switch that pops? Do you do intricate subtle animation where you need to have a precise switch and that pop is gonna be a problem? How are the foot controls? Does it just have a foot roll or does it have pivots off the side? Does it have squash if you do a compression? Does it have potentially an IK ankle to move things around? If it's a rig without shoes, do you see the toes? How are the toe controls? Can you spread the toes? All that jazz. That being said, you might go through all this list and then realize, well, I don't really need all of this because again, then you should test your rig so that it works for the shot that you want to do. So besides just a general look over, does it have this and that? You can then also check for specific things. So if you do an acting piece, it could be with or without audio, where the character is breathing a lot. Well, does the rig have a chest control that allows for breathing? Or do you have to kind of cheat it with a kind of a spine joint scale type of thing? So if you have very specific things like that, then I would test for that for sure. Another shot I did a while back was with a shark. And the general motion of the spine was just not quite working to get that smooth fish movement control. So it was quite a cheat and I ended up doing a lot less with that rig because of it. But it was also the only cool looking shark rig at the time and I just had to use it. So sometimes you're stuck with something that doesn't work. Then you have to come up with a couple cheats and, and just ways to get around that. But I think you're gonna use a lot on rigs are hands. So can you do a nice hand pose? If you do a fist and you close it, is it gonna be where the fingers are evenly spread out or can you really pose it out with a nice curvature here and compression here? So look for general hand poses and again, they need to fit for your shot. But in general, are they going to be appealing poses? And especially with fists, you don't want this claw-like thing if you need to have a nicely posed out fist. But can you also do this? How are the palm controls to cave in? How are the individual finger controls? Do you potentially need IK fingers because of something where it's sticky and needs to stay like this? I mean, again, it depends on your shot. Now, if you don't do a super far away body mechanics jump action shot, then you're gonna have to check for facial controls. Then I would look at extremes. How far can you go with the smile? or compression for your somewhat of a squash and stretch in the face, but your extremes with the outs and the ins. If you do a lip sync and the character says, ooh, how nice is your ooh shape or a pucker shape? How are the eyes? Do you have nice eye blinks? If the shape goes down, does it really cover nicely? Do you have individual eyelid controls if you need that amount of detail? How are your eyebrows? Do you have separate controls or is it just one ginormous thing? Can you go separate? You potentially
essentially have a control that has one control for the whole browser. They're more connected. If you do go up and down, does it take whole skull geometry down and make it some weird Neanderthal? And how much detail does it have? Do you have cheek controls? If you smile, can you then push the cheeks up, which then push up the lower eyelids? Do you have a nose control? If I go, oh, uh, or ah, or whatever, it's going to move the nose in general. It's going to move the tip. Do you have nostril controls? Do you have separate side nostril control? Are your neck controls okay so that you can do all kinds of movement, but with separate joints from here and here? Do you have a swallow control? Maybe in your shot, you need to swallow. A lot of rigs don't have a swallow control. So how would you be able to do that if you need to? Now, the extra bonus is, does the rig have the ability to modify the rig in terms of different hairstyles, you know, wigs or mustache or beard or clothing? And obviously not many rigs have that, but if that rig has it, that's great. And is it helpful? And if it's not helpful, should you go with another rig? Maybe because all those extra options are slowing down the rig. So maybe don't go with that. And speaking of speed, now let's pretend all that stuff is there. All those extra details and everything's there. You like all the controls, all the options are there. But then is it a pain to animate because it slows everything down? So do you potentially have a low resolution, mid resolution, high resolution option on your rig? Or maybe just low res and high res? Is it broken up into separate elements and then the high res is one ginormous piece? Do you potentially have a low res body with a high res head? Because ultimately you want a really good workflow and you want a fast workflow. So even if the rig is awesome, if it's super slow to animate, then that's kind of a problem. So besides checking your rig for controls, I would do a quick little test animation. And I wouldn't just move IK arms around or FK arms around and kind of turn it like that seems fine. You got to test it within actual animation. So maybe just do a basic jump. Kind of goes back to bouncing balls. It's simple to do. A squash, a full extension, compression and landing, a little bit of some offsets and arms, something quick and dirty. Don't worry about full placement, all that stuff. But look at how does the rig perform when I actually animate it, move it away from the origin and use pretty much all the main controllers. But maybe all of that is good, but it's going to be a multi-character shot. So what happens if you bring in another rig, a different rig? Are there any complications or does it suddenly get really slow? Or if you bring in the same rig, can it work with two rigs together? And that can be referenced or unreferenced. You might have clashing nodes where some controls don't work or some shapes can't be dialed in. And again, bringing in a second character, if it's a different one or the same one, how does that affect speed? But then let's pretend all that is okay. So the speed is okay, the animation is okay, multiple characters, all that stuff is great, your animation is done. What if you go beyond a play blast and you're actually rendering? So it would be good to do test renders before you do any of this. If you have just a regular render, is the texture showing up correctly? Are there any problems with normals? Are there any geometry problems? Some lighting issues? If you have a big close up and you show eyes, if you render, is there some texture or some refraction or something that if you look this way and you render, it's actually looking this way. That can happen too. So you might have to reanimate all the eyes. So look at your specific goals and target ideas for your shot and just test. And again, don't just test the rig, but potentially test the renders. So you know ahead of time, what are the potential pitfalls? Like render time in general, how long does it take to render? Because the speed issue is important. Because if you animate just at home when you got zero deadlines and you got time, yeah, okay, well then you can waste time and you know try things out and fix things and do a couple hacks and whatever you can do. Or well, let's pretend you do have a deadline. You do something, you do a test for a freelance job or you're working on the 11 second club and you know that's the deadline there. You don't want to animate till the very last minute because thinking, I got time, I got to animate, do make this extra beautiful animation. And then you got five hours left. Oh, let me render this and realize, oh my God, it's going to take five hours per frame. The lighting is all messed up. This doesn't show up. The head is all black. The eye is all red. Arms are white. Everything explodes. So overall, as the title says, test your rig, test the controls, test some general pitfalls, test for specific elements that you know you're going to use for the shot, test for speed. How long is the play blast? How long is a render? And if you go beyond, you think about workflow, does the rig have a body picker? Can you quickly select the controls? Well, that's more of a workflow issue we're going to talk about later. But again, you don't want to have surprises in the middle of the shot. I did another shot a long time ago because it's been so long since I did personal shots where I had to animate a separate character and the facial controls were not really there. I was testing the rig and the beard was deforming. It was nice with the jaw. But then I realized that the brows, the eyelids, just the blinking, all that stuff was really either not working, not there or very crude, which then eventually compromised the shot. So don't make my mistakes. Test, test early. And again, if you have a rig that other people have used, just check it out online, see what other people have done. So you don't have to do all the prep work. 
But even then, you might still want to test it just in case. Maybe there are problems with your machine, your graphics card, I don't know, whatever it is, there are always problems when you animate on the computer. That being said, I'm sure there's a ton that I have missed. This is kind of the stuff that I look for, that I remembered, or I remembered from my own problems. So if you have other things that are super important, please, please, please let me know in the comment. Let other people know. There's, I'm sure, again, a ton of stuff that I probably have missed. So whatever checklist you have, it would be awesome if you could share that. And that's it. That's it for testing out your rig. Next time, it's going to be about libraries, pose libraries, finger libraries, facial libraries, what to do, what to use, what you could do to get around it if you don't have it. So hopefully I will see you next week for that. If you like this, as always, as I say, I would love a like. I would love a subscribe. Hit that bell button for all the notifications. And if you watch the whole thing till the very end, as always, I appreciate it that you took the time out of your day to watch this clip. And that's it for me.